Wait now. She's coming. She's coming. Oh, the newspapers, Rosie. Gee, people are coming. The editor of Look Magazine is here with his photographer. Everybody's with you. Rosie, you can do this. It's time. Rosie, you should just do it. Rosie, you don't have to do this. If you don't want to. Yes, ma'am. Go on, they expect you, ma'am. Good morning, girls. We have a new pupil joining us today, Rosa McCauley. You can sit right back there. Thank you, Miss White. I need to see everyone's eyes up front, please. Thank you. You're from the country, aren't you? Hi, Lib. I've heard of that. I don't know where it is, but I heard of it. I'm Rebecca Daniels. You can call me John. So, what do you think about Miss White School so far? It's a lot different from what I'm used to. But this is the first time you was ever in a schoolroom with just the right on and glass in the windows. And you never seen a chalkboard before. Or had a white teacher. How do you know all this? Only country girls eat tomato sandwiches. Pass your tests forward. Rowena, did you not do well on your test? I never do well, Miss Barton. I'm too stupid. Rowena, you are not stupid. I don't know why we're bothering with all this reading and arithmetic when all we're going to end up doing for jobs is washing somebody's clothes and wiping their baby's snotty noses. Does anybody want to answer Rowena's question? Three, four, two, three, four. Am I 
Rosa, why do we bother? We bother so we can be equal to everybody else. We're not equal to everybody else. We're not equal to white folks. I was raised to believe if I put my mind to it, I could do whatever I want in this world. I was taught no one's better than me. No man, no woman, black or white. No one. If white folks say... No one. A person can take everything from you, even your life, but they can't take your dignity. Can't nobody take that from you but you. That's what my grandpappy told me, and I believe him. If you learn nothing else at Mrs. White's school, may the blessed Lord help you remember what Rosa just taught you. Hey, man! Look at Tuskegee, and you can keep fighting him. Well, you ain't been nowhere else, bro. She's doing fair. I'm coming over to see her real soon, here. Yes, ma'am. Bye-bye. We wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. Mm -hmm. This debt we pay to human guide. With torn and bleeding hearts, we smile. Pause. Don't let me have to take that straight raise out your hands. What? <laughs> Those are the words of Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Who? A great Negro poet. Must have been one of them challenges. <laughs> <laughs> Working against time to get the Scottsboro boys free. Well, at least off death row. The overseas newspapers starting to make a ruckus about it. Isn't the NAACP trying? The NAACP is just a bunch of scared old men who blow hot and cold. It's gonna take money to help those boys. A lot of it. So I'm working with a group here in Montgomery trying to raise it. It's dangerous business, Pops. It may be. Doing now. The park's trying to rob the crater. Those high school guys. What about the one in the purple sweater? I've never seen her before. Maybe she's new. Where well, I stand, brother. <laughs> she looks better than new. Uh -huh. I know, I know. Hello there, lady. Yeah. Hello, Pops. No need to stand out in the rain. All right. Oh. Yeah, crying shame. That pretty sweater all wet. <laughs> it's just water. It'll dry. Under that bright, sunny smile, I'm sure it will. Mm -hmm. There's some newspaper. Take home what you like. Negro newspapers may be hard to come by, but not in this shop. We got the Christ. Isn't he cute? Pops, girl. Raymond Parks. The Chicago Defender. He too light skinned for my taste. But he just right for man. <laughs> they say he's working with the Scott Sporo Boys League of Defense Fund. Really? Life is about facing danger, my friends. About taking risks. We have to stand up for what's right, even if we have to put our lives on the line. Mm -hmm. The way I see it, every Negro in this town should be behind supporting those Scottsboro Boys. They ain't need money for their legal defense fund. Mm. And I have the address right here where you can make your contribution. <coughs> That's the shop owner. Let's go. I'm just going to go and do my school. Maybe we should leave. And we're in this community. We're already winning. We wear the mask that hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. Beneath our feet and long the mind. Let the world dream otherwise. <laughs> <laughs>
Mm. You wear the mask. Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Home. I see y'all over here. Wait, Rosie. Wait, Rosie. <laughs> hey. I'm Raymond Parks. Everybody calls me Parks. I wish you would, too. I, I, I have to go. What's your name? Getting wet. You better hurry up and tell me your name before I drive. I, I really do. I have to go home. She said I fell in love with a gal. I thought was kind. She made me lose my money. And almost lose my mind. Man. <laughs> ah, you're gonna make me late for work. What's her name? <laughs> Fanny, what's her name, girl? I shouldn't tell you. Well, sure you should. Or you wouldn't be sweet Fanny. Rosa. Our cousin's name is Rosa Louise Macaulay. <laughs> Thank you, Fanny. Tell your cousin I'll be seeing her. Hmm. I beg for shame here, fancy <laughs> man. What you paying for? It's my first date with Rosa. Louise McCall. Got <laughs> <laughs> Right up there near Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Right up near the border. Those folks are plenty mad over this. Of course they're mad, brother. Everybody knows them boys didn't break those white girls on that train. There's even talk about the NAACP coming down from New York. Oh, they just gonna make it worse for everybody. They've been sentenced to die, Mama. How much worse can we get? Can't be nobody we know, not with a car. That's not just a car. That's that's a Studebaker, a red Studebaker with a colored man getting there. <laughs> hey, man. How you doing? How you doing? All right. Wow. A real Studebaker. Oh, who, Ma? Oh, it's him. Oh, him who? Um, uh, the, 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 the Bob, Mama. Uh, uh, Parks. Raymond Parks. I think that's what he said his what? name was. Well, how'd you get to meet Barbara? I, I didn't meet him. He met me. Motion picture camera, something like that. Go oh. on, I wanted to do a poker game. But I can't see. Mama, go out there and tell him I'm not at home. I'm looking for Rosa. Is she home? Ooh. Rosa! Guess not, man. I see you came by, though. Yeah, all right. Well, give her these. I'll do that. Right, Still right. want to learn how to drive that. Don't put in a good word for me. I'll right? do that. I'll right. do that. I'll do that. Rosa, that man here again. Hey, hey man. How you doing? I'm how you all right. doing? Is your sister? She can't come to the door right now, man. I tell he came by, though. Yeah, I know you do. Oh, thank you, Mr. Yeah. He's here again? Rosie, I am just fresh out of patience with you now. I don't know why he keeps coming back. What did he say, Mama? He said, it's a good thing gladiolas grow year round. <laughs> Come on, I want to show you something. 
might have known about this. I'd have brought my bathing suit. Oh, it's a little muddy for swimming, but it's great for fishing. Oh. <laughs> my grandpapa taught me how to fish. I sure do miss him, even after all these years. He was born not too far from here. Spent close to half his life as a slave. You ever talk about it? Not to me. <laughs> I used to bait my grandpapa's hook when his eyesight got too bad. Oh, we'd sit for hours, talk about anything and everything. Sometimes we'd say nothing at all. <laughs> Mama, she used to tease. She said, I learned to fish before I could even walk. I don't know about that, but, oh, I sure do love it. Did you fish much? No. Your daddy never taught you how? My daddy never taught me much anything. Except maybe how many different ways I could eat him. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Oh, that's all right. Pops was a carpenter. He was also white, close enough to pass for most of the time. That was his problem, was those times he couldn't pass that he ate away at him. Took it out on my mother. And me. When it finally took off, we had ourselves a little party. We heard he died falling off the roof. I had myself an even bigger party. vouch that this car is his. Is that right? I got the ownership papers right here. You're moving too fast, boy. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Harry Hilton. Get your ass off the road. Calling all cars. Harry Hilton. Calling all cars. Harry Hilton. Sometimes it ain't. I know that too. Plan most likely lynch these boys. 
they aren't going to stand for any local color group looking on that Scottsboro case. You ready? sold the car. As long as I have you, I don't need anything else. May God bless you and keep you. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Mr. Parks, you may now salute Mrs. Parks.
Going on this bus, you're going to get off and come back home in the back. Get off for what? I'm already on. Besides, it's raining. I don't care if the sky is falling. You are going to ride with my bus. You're going to get off and come back home round the back. Do you hear me? Do not. Hands on me. Let's go. Come on. It's a conscription letter, Mama. You don't get out of being drafted. But there must be somebody to write to. And tell them what? I think there's been a terrible mistake, Mr. Roosevelt. But my mama don't think I should be all fighting in nobody's war. Well, what's wrong with that? It's the truth. <laughs> oh, Raymond. Instead of trying to make the world safe for democracy, this damn country ought to be trying to make Alabama safe for the Negro. Well, now that's true. Well, that's Rosa. Oh, my God. Mom, that's over five miles. Did you miss the bus, baby? No. What happened? I was put off. You're thrown off the bus? Why? What difference does it make? I'll get some coffee. Get out the wet clothes. I got you so. <laughs> Put his hands on you? No. He wanted to. Why did he put you off the bus? Because I did not want to pay my fare. Get off and get back on in the back. All right. Go on, lay back. No, lay back, lay back, lay back. <sighs> it's been like that ever since there was trolley. Well, does that make it right? I didn't say it was right. I said that's the way it's always been. 
The last time I checked, the dime I pay for the token to ride those buses is the same color as the dime the white folks use. We are paying to be humiliated, and it does not make sense. Since when did these peck of woods ever make sense? Registration drive. After the Double B campaign. Can we help you? I'm sorry for interrupting. I'm here to see someone. Rosie! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> oh, Johnny. So good to see you. Oh. Now, what you doing here? Well, I saw your picture in the paper. <clears throat> Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, no, 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 we'll talk later. No, come on. Stay here. Oh, this is important. This is my best friend, everybody. Now, Argy, would you let her have this chair, please? Okay, mm -hmm. stay right here. Mm -hmm. Sit right there. Oh, wait a minute, hold on now. Are you a member? A member? Of the NAACP? That's us. The people you just interrupted. Well, no. No, no, you sit right here. Well, you are here by a member in good standing. Dues are collected at the end of the month. <laughs> We're beginning a membership drive. And you'll be an even better member if you take good notes. Well, I guess I can. The loud one, that's E.D. Nixon. President. He's a Pullman port on his regular job. He's noisy, but harmless. We've got a big campaign. You ladies need a ride anyway? No, no. Uh, we're going to have lunch. <laughs> Take my friend to the oh. No. oh, excuse me. Um, Mr. Nixon? I, I, I do not mind being secretary, but I hope that you do not think that that is all that I can do. Well, what else can you do? Well, you tell me what you need, and uh, I will tell you if I can do it. <laughs> Same old Rosa. <laughs> we got this group called the Youth Council. School-age kids in need of an adult advisor for things like counseling, Bible study, teaching self-esteem. I love it. Hold on now. We also need a little juice, a little protest spirit, something too many of men getting at home. She can do it, Mr. Nixon. You got the right one. She can do it. Now, you have a nice day. So what have you been doing with yourself? I've been working as a seamstress across the street in Montgomery Fair Department store. Alterations, dresses. <laughs> Ain't it chill? No. We've been hoping. I guess the Lord is of the ideas on how he wants us to spend our time. Would you like something to drink? Hey, wait now. Mm -mm. And you come all the way down here to find me and then get yourself put to work. The least I can do is buy you a soda water. Let me see here. Oh, that's my voter registration card. I always wanted to vote for Mr. Roosevelt. Really? Eleanor, his wife? She made it possible for Marian Anderson to sing on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. Mm. 
You registered? Not yet. Lord, don't tell Mr. Nixon it. Or he'll have you tuned up for a lecture calling folks who don't vote deserve the treatment to get. <laughs> Two sort of water. You can call me John. And since you're new and don't have any friends, I'll be your best friend. Miss White, Miss Barton, and all the teachers are from the North. They seem straight. They are. There's something called Quaker. It's a religion that believes all people are the same and should be treated right. That's a good religion. My mother thinks Miss White is a saint. We're putting up for what she does to keep the school open. Like what? And lots of people don't want her teaching colored girls. Even burnt the school twice to try to stop her. But each time, Miss White and other teachers will just build it back up and keep on teaching. Secretary? Mm-hmm. The meetings are just once a month. Secretaries do a lot more work than just go to meetings. Well, I'm only volunteering, so I'll do as much as I can or I want to. That's what scares me. You do all you ask to do and then some. Are you afraid that I won't be home as often? I'm afraid you can't run fast enough. And then you won't be home at all. No, the police watch those meetings, Rosa. I don't have to tell you what can happen. I won't be one of the leaders, Parks. Oh, you think a stick of dynamite cares if you're just a secretary? I want to do this. You don't need my permission. I did not ask for your permission, but your approval would be nice. Oh, you want my approval to stick your neck out with a bunch of cowards oh. down at the NAACP? No, I can't do that. They're all we have. <laughs> and uh, Scottsboro was 10 years ago. That's right, 10 years, and those boys are still in prison. 10 years with the almighty National Association of Colored People wringing his hands like a bunch of old ladies shouting for justice with a whisper. You know, Jews and communists did more to help them boys. No, they did. No, you're gonna do what you wanna do. Pie too. Mm -hmm. The weight of my heart. The heart I hope I already have. It's the mind I'm working on. Mm-hmm. Parks. I really need you to understand that for the first time in my life I feel like I can help. Like maybe I can do something important for our people. I understand that passion, Rosa. And I was there once, remember? I know. That's why I was hoping. Yeah, but that. I'm afraid of that passion, too. Afraid for all the things that can happen. And what if I promise to be very, very careful? But you can't. Don't you see? You can't be careful and be effective. Black people have been trying for 300 years. and give him because he is his friend. Yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. All right. Who can tell me what persistence means? Yes.
came here to register. You live in Montgomery County? Yes. How many states are there? 48. How many senators from each state? Two from each state, 96 in the whole country. Answer the questions completely and legibly, front and back. Next. Good morning, Mr. Lester. We finally made it into register. Yeah, the boys been me to get it done, so I figured I might as well do it. How's Emma and the kids? They're good. You tell her that Janet from down at the county says hi. That'll be a dollar fifty. That wasn't nearly as hard as I figured. <laughs> You tell Hank hello for me. Oh, I will. I'll see you in church, Sunday. Okay. Bye now. Good day. Satisfactorily complete the civic test to register to vote. I, I would like the test back, please. I'm afraid that's against our policy. Well, how will I know what questions I got wrong? Judicial and legislative branches. Makes and enforces laws. Next. The U.S. Supreme Court. You know, Rosie, you know all of this mess. Probably better than most lawyers. How many lawyers do you think they turn away down at that courthouse? White or colored? That is my point. As a U.S. citizen, I have a right to vote, and no person who does not know or who cannot tell me what I got wrong can keep me from that right. How many United States representatives are in Congress? 435. Next. And you're? Thank you. What's this? Oh, I'm sorry. That one is my copy. This is the third time I've taken this test. What is it? Oh, the uh, questions from the test. I wrote them down along with my answers. If you tell me that I failed again, I want a lawyer to tell me what I'm doing wrong. That'll be twelve dollars, a dollar fifty for each year past the age of twenty-one. The first year you should have registered. My registration card, please. You'll get it in the mail. Those 
segregating buses are the most complex and The not. whims of individual drivers make it even more confusing. Some bus drivers are meaner than others, and some are meaner than rattlesnakes. Pay up front, then they speed off, leaving with face full of exhausts. Women are fed up. That's why the story of women's political First a Negro soldier gets shot on the bus, now this. You know, we have to force this city to treat Negro riders on its buses as human beings. Good evening. I'm Rosa Parks. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Clifford, Virginia Durr, Rosa Parks. Pleasure. It's nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you, Rosa. And you, Joanne Robinson, Women's Political Council. We have to bless you. Mr. Nixon, call me tomorrow for change of mind. Very good. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. What happened? Colored girl got arrested on the bus. Claudette Colvin. For not giving a pussy to a white man. We mm. need to find someone who will swell up the people, like a revival's going on. Claudette is 15. She's just a child. Claudette's not the one. Mm -mm. Well, I'm going home. Well, you can give me a ride. All right. You know. Oh, and uh, Rosa? Yes. Don't stay too late. I don't want your husband getting mad at me. Parks but... understands that I enjoy my work. But Lord knows a woman don't need to be nowhere but home and in the kitchen. Then I cannot be here typing all your letters on this underwood or organizing your lecture calendar or answering all your mail without pay. Well, I, I need a secretary. And you're a good one. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Joanne, you coming with me? Give me the bus cases. It's always the buses. for Mr. Nixon. Oh, I'm afraid he's gone for the day. Is there something I can do for you? It's my boy. Elijah. He needs help. since last summer. Ever since I started delivering things to Sarah's house. And since we were kids, we played together. So, you were in her house? Yes, sir. Mabel peeked in the bedroom window. Sarah said I'd bust in and force myself on them. But I didn't do what they said, Miss Parks, ma'am. I believe you, Elijah. I believe you. <sighs> said they're gonna give me a lecture chair. No. Not if we can help it. Ain't nothing nobody can do to help me. You got to have faith, Elijah. I expect I done cried all my faith away, ma'am. The police being here all the time talking about how they're going to watch me fry. That young man did not rape that girl. 
Maybe not. But you going down to that jail didn't help him. Well, somebody had to do something. And what is it that you did besides give him false hope? You cannot even do that. I never felt so helpless. And it was California. These graveyards are filled with innocent black boys, Rosa. There's also quite a few innocent black girls and men and women. Well, I never sat across from any of the others or saw the fear and the helplessness in their eyes. I do not know them. And you don't know this one. Rosa, baby, this boy was caught in bed with a white girl. His mom ought to give thanks that the police got to him before the Klan did. So is it better to fry than to be lynched? You know what I'm saying. What if he were our son, Hawks? How thankful would we be then? If he was my son, what went on between him and that girl never would have happened. You don't know that, Hawks. Oh, but I do. Because I'd have made damn sure that he knew how to south work. Remember, whatever happens, you do not become angry or rude. Just do what we came here to do. Go. I'd like to check out a book, please. The procedure is that you go to the colored branch in your neighborhood. Check out the book there. I went. But they didn't have what I need. They hardly ever have what I need. That may be, but you can't check books out here. Why not? They just checked out books. You must put in a request at your own branch to have the book sent to you. That takes too long. By the time you send it, I won't need it anymore. Well, I can't help that. Your procedure is unjust and insulting to anyone who knows right from wrong. I'd like to check out a book, please. It's, it's tonight. I know. <laughs> They're gonna kill my boy, Mrs. Parks. because of you, Rosa. You are the best in this town. Well, thank you, Mrs. Wynn. I enjoy my work. Rosa, now can you come in early tomorrow morning? Christmas has a swamp. Yes, Mr. Bradley. 
I can use the hours. Good. And be here at eight? Yes, sir. Hey there. Is this his shoe size on this piece of paper? I want to try and choose two. My feet are glowing. <laughs> They're green. I want to try on shoes. Oh, we'll find you a handsome pair. Mama. Now, oh, hush, baby. You know you can't try on shoes. <laughs> That's why, why we trace your foot at home. She's getting new shoes today. Why is she making a copy of her feet? You ain't never had no shoes before. <laughs> Color folks can't try out things at the stores. All right, let me see what I can do. <laughs> Those front seats. Y'all better make it light on yourselves and let me have those seats. Listen, I got, a, I got a colored woman on my bus in violation of the law. Did you warn her, Jim? Yes, sir, I warned her. Well, then you just do it. You got to exercise your powers and put her off. All right, now, I'm going to need police backup. thing you need to remember is that you're as good as anybody else. White, black, or green with stripes. Don't ever be afraid of what can happen to you if you're fighting for what's right. As long as you keep that with you, then hate will be a word for other people. The law is the law. 
Lady, you're under arrest. How are you doing this evening? Just in time for five back of Christmas cookies. <laughs> Just out there. No, no, I couldn't. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, no, got trophy. No, no, really. Rosa's been arrested. No. It's going to be all right. Just come. Just be calm. What happened? Words all over town. Rosa's been arrested. She's in jail. Did they beat her? We don't know anything yet. Oh, Lord, have it's mercy. Just parts. Oh. Oh. Montgomery, please, give me the death sergeant. Get her out. Oh. Oh. Yes, this is Ed oh. Nixon, President Montgomery NAACP. We understand you've got one of our members down... Son of a bitch. Hello? Y yes, Mr. Nixon. Clifford! It's Mr. Nixon. The police have arrested Rosa Parks and they won't give him any information. What happened? When? Okay, I'll try and then I'm on my way. This is Clifford Durr. Attorney Clifford Durr, Sergeant. We pray to that confidence. Amen. Okay, ladies, let's break it up in there. Rosa Parks. Let's go. Everything will be all right. Rose. It's going to be all right. Thanks for having me. It'll be all right. Don't worry now. We can't afford no big fine. Whatever it is, we just have to find a way to pay it. Rosie's not going back to jail. When's the court date? It's Monday. And don't worry, there's no way in hell we're gonna let Rosie go back to jail. No, she shouldn't have been in there in the first place. Oh. I'm sorry, Rosa, but I'm not hiding how I feel. You and that group of yours are just as responsible for oh. her being arrested. Yeah. 
Hello. Incidentally, this is Johnny. Rose is arrested has upset all the color folks in Montgomery. Do you remember Joanne Robinson? Well, she has a group of her students friend leaflets right now. They want to boycott the buses. Yeah, Johnny? They organized a meeting. Uh-huh. With the new minister. When? Tomorrow morning at Dexter Avenue Church. All right. There's a meeting scheduled for tomorrow morning at Dexter Avenue Church. For what? It's about you and your stand on the bus. Our ministers have the phones buzzing all over town. They want you at the meeting. And well, if you can't make it, they'll understand. Dexter Avenue Church? The one with the new minister? That's the one. Mr. Parks, if you think we put Rosa up to this, you don't know your wife real well. If anything, she's the one leading us. Hey, Mom. I'm going to fix you something. You must be stoned. <laughs> you cannot really believe that they asked me to do this. My wife was in jail. I did not ask to be arrested, Parks. All I wanted was what everybody else on that bus wanted, to go home. And I do not need Nixon, the NAACP, or anybody else to tell me that I have a right to my dignity when I'm taking that 10 cent ride. Do about this here arrest? Well, we need to do something. Everybody listen. This is what we're going to do. I say we stop riding their bus. They don't treat us with respect. They don't deserve our business. Stop riding the buses. Just like that? Just like that. For one whole day. It's a moment we've all been waiting for. Rosa Parks here is a good citizen. We have got to take a stand. I say we stop riding the buses Monday. The day of Rosa's trial. Why do we need to think There's no time to think. This is what it is right for. That's the only way. If Montgomery is like most cities in the South, colored folk make up the majority of the ride. That's right. We hit them crackers where it hurts. The cash buck. Boycott is illegal. Then we'll call it a protest. Is that all right with you? Y'all know it's bound to be some retaliation. Now let's just start off first by sending a letter off. Letters? Letters? We talking about one day off the bus. And one day is all they need to feel like they can put us back in our place. Our place is not looking up at them from our knees. Amen. Tell even a lap dog gets tired of being kicked. Amen. Now Mrs. Parks has given us her courage, a golden opportunity. Yes. Are we going to be cowards and just let it go? No. Now you, you don't talk to me like that. I'm a grown man. Well, stand up like one, Reverend. Well, I'm standing up like one. You, you, you can't tell me. Let Reverend King speak. Let the Reverend speak. Reverend King. If a protest against the buses is going to work, it's critical that we be together. That's right. That's right. Divisiveness is the sure path to failure. And that's what we're doing right now. charge was disorderly conduct. And you don't think there's going to be a problem? Mrs. Parks was not disorderly. She did not resist or in any way get belligerent with the arresting officer. Plus, there's a law that says that a colored person doesn't have to give up their seat to a white if they're seated in the colored section and there's no other seats open. Well, I didn't know that. You and every other Negro in Montgomery. Bottom line is that bus was filled. You were within your lawful right not to get up. Just get her off. Look over there at the bus stop. <laughs> yeah, we can't. to expect everybody to walk. A lot of folks just live too far. Y'all get in on the bus or not? I ain't getting on until Jim Crow gets off. Sweet mate. <laughs> <laughs>
gonna be a good day. That bus is naked to Jaybird. <laughs> do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Ms. Wycliffe, where were you approximately 7 p.m. on the evening of December 1st, 1955? I was riding the bus. I got on at the Court Square bus stop. And did you see the arrest of the Parks woman? I saw it as clearly as I see you. At the time of her altercation with the driver, Mr. Blake, were there any empty seats in the colored section of that bus? There were plenty of empty seats. That's a lie! I'll have order in my court. Hey, Donnie. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, Miss Leona, look at that pretty tree. That's Rosie's <laughs> handiwork. Oh, Rosie. Oh, the folks want to rise up. Aren't y'all going? Going where? The Hope Street Church has a mass meeting call. About what? The protest. I think they're going to continue it, and they want to know if you coming. What do they need with Rosa? Well, I think that, I guess they thought it would be good if she was there. Well, good for who? Well, if y'all going, you better come on, hurry up. Now, look, half the color folk in all Montgomery talking about this meeting. This is an important meeting. Come on with me, Miss Leon. I'm telling you, this is a, this is it. This is an important meeting. Get it right up, Rosie. Parks. They using you, Rosa. Can't you see it? Yes, I do see it. And I don't mind. Well, I mind. I mind them using my wife. You're not Harriet Tubman, damn it. No, I'm only Rosa Parks. And I am your wife. So if you do not want me to go to this meeting, I won't. You go on. Do what you want to do. Montgomery's finest citizens, not one of the finest Negro citizens, but one of the finest citizens in Montgomery, was taken from a bus and carried to jail and arrested because she refused to give up a seat to a white person. And since it had to happen, I'm so happy it happened to a person like Mrs. Rosa Parks. And nobody can doubt the boundless outreach of her integrity the height of her character, or the depth of her Christian commitment to the teachings of Jesus. We're going to work with grim and firm determination to gain justice in the city. And we are not wrong. If we are wrong, the Supreme Court of this nation is wrong. If we are wrong, the Constitution of the United States is wrong. If we are wrong, God Almighty is wrong. If we are wrong, justice is a lie. And we are determined here in Montgomery to work and fight until justice runs down like water. Yes, Mr. Bradley. 
Your position has been eliminated, Rosa. I'm sorry. Business is down. And... Down? But this is as busy as it gets all year. Well, not if your boycott continues. Your pay through last week. Reverend Miss Davis gonna look after her tonight. We had to board up the house for safety, Rosa. Oh. We can't take much more of this. We supposed to call the police when they come like this. What for? They never do anything about it. Hell, half them crackers under them hoods is police. We're still supposed to call for the record. Legally, it would help us. Why are you so late? I was out looking for work. You lost your job? He said business was down, so they had to let me go. <laughs> but it'll be all right. I'll find something. And with your job... My job? Which mean the job I used to have. What happened? Let's just say it's no secret who my wife is.
We got some new ones just down there. What time's the next carpool? <laughs> Might as well look at your watch and pick a number. It's just as good as the schedule. If you don't want to wait, you can catch the city bus. It ought to be by direct. Yeah, well, I, I just might do that. One of my customers from the store, Mrs. Rama, says she might have some more work for us when this is finished. Well, bless Mrs. Rama's heart. <laughs> and Mr. Rama, too. Looking the other way. <laughs> Raymond loves you. I know he does. That is why it hurts to see him like this. Things is hard for everybody these days, Rosie. But it's my fault. It's not your fault. Yes, it is. I was the one who sat on that bus. I was the one who dared that driver to deal with me. And he did. So, here we are. Are you trying to tell me that you take it all back? <laughs> yes. <sighs> no. I don't know. You do know. You know. And knowing what you do now, you would still do exactly the same thing because you can't help yourself. You would do it because that's who you are, Rosie. Thank God. I thank God, Rosie, that's who you are. I love you, babe. <laughs> this protest ain't doing nothing but jiving folk. Jiving folk into thinking something gonna change. Ain't nothing gonna change. Cause Mr. Charlie ain't no closer to treating colored folk right on them buses now than when that lady started this mess. But well, somebody had to do something. Yeah, well, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it too, son. See that? Just ain't me. Cause these feet, long while oh, done seen more miles and red sand than yourn ever will. Yeah, well, I done my share walking. My soul is weary, son. Weary of being treated like less than a man. Yo, man, I, I know what you mean. You don't know what I mean, boy. And you don't know what that lady was saying on that bus. But I know what she was saying. I'm going to keep on a walking as long as I have to. Because these feet may be tired, but my soul is resting.
you get home? Just got here. What are you doing? Reminding myself just how lucky I am. I remember when we first started courting. You wouldn't come to the door. <laughs> I knew there was something about you worth coming back for. I knew it that first day outside the barber shop. If I had known way back then, you gonna turn this city, maybe the whole South upside down. you did on that bus changed a lot of things, Rosa. Made a lot of people think about themselves, about how they treat people, about how they live their lives. I never meant for it to change us. I know. But it did. And even though it took me a while to see it, It was a good change. I really didn't do anything, Paul. All this to do about me and that bus. Most of us alive today, in a very real sense, this journey began 43 years ago when a woman named Rosa Parks sat down on a bus in Alabama and wouldn't get up. She's sitting down with the first lady tonight and she may get up or not as she chooses.